Hi, everyone. This is uh, Joe DiGiovanni with TAP Network, and I'm here with Kyle Barkins, uh, my other co-founder from TAP Network. We're a marketing and technology company, and we just want to do a little housekeeping on the call today uh, with us, as well as uh, Aretha Simons from TechSoup. So if you want to communicate with us during the live event, um, just go into the Zoom chat or raise your hands for talking, or you can you can email us, but we'll use the chat for any questions. And the event will be recorded. So at the end of the event, we'll, we can send the recording and we'll send the presentation as well. So yes, I'm, my name is Joe DiGiovanni, co-founder of TAP Network. My background has been in marketing uh, communications and Kyle, his background is in uh, marketing technology. We, uh, we formed TAP Network as an organization 10 years ago to really serve the nonprofit space. We've served over 600 nonprofits. Uh, we have a staff of around 40 people and we work directly with TechSoup. So anyone who comes to TechSoup and needs website development or marketing services, we're the exclusive provider on behalf of TechSoup. Um, and yeah, as I said, we're a marketing um, technology company, purpose-driven, uh, empowering organizations for good, and we're excited to get started on today's uh, today's meeting. So the agenda, today we're going to really look at website goals. We're going to learn how to determine your organization's top goals, and then how your website can be used to achieve those goals uh, on the front end and the back end. We'll look at what platforms we can use to, to execute that. And then we'll also share some uh, tools and technologies to get you there and really increase your uh, conversion rates, no matter what, what your goals are. So the importance of website goals. A lot of folks think of goals, they, they assign them to marketing, they assign them to, to a business, but a website, it's really the command central for, for your nonprofit. If you're gonna achieve your goals, the website is 99.9% .9 gonna be the engine that, that gets you there. So the first thing you really need is to clearly identify your business goals and how do they align with, with your website goals. So focusing on, that strategic part will really will really help you get there. So a well-crafted website that aligns with these goals will do just that. It will attract supporters, donations, awareness, and any other goals you have. Um, when setting goals, we always look at these as SMART goals. So are they specific? Are they measurable? Are they achievable? And, and, and are they timely? Can you do them in, in the time you're, you're seeking? So let's, let's pull that together. Um, so first things first, how do we, how do different goals for a website change the content and structure? So we're going to look at the content and structure of the websites and then see how they align with, with the goals of your organization. So what are the most common nonprofit website goals? Raising awareness, that's usually at the top of the list, and then driving donations. But there's a lot that happens in, in between as well. Some organizations, their whole nonprofit relies on volunteers, vol volunteer recruitment and volunteer management. And then is the website using to being used to support the program deliveries, the providing the information and resources that your volunteers or the, or the people you serve need? Or is it serving to build the community? It's where people come to interact amongst themselves and really becoming an online portal per se for, for collaboration? And then is it used for to advocate for change? Are you driving petitions and, and, and whatnot for, for your nonprofit? And then sharing news and updates. So all these pieces uh, work together. Some will be more important than others, but really when we design a website, we look at each one of these, look at the importance and how they're interrelated. So from the chat, just love to hear from everybody. Yes, the, the slides will be available. Um, love to hear from everyone. And you can just put it into the chat, like what are the most important goals for your organization? If you could put the, uh, the top one or two goals, that would be great. Just get a feel for what people are looking to do. Raise awareness, building community, attracting volunteers, donations. Here we go. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice mix. Um, all of the above, right? <laughs> 
so yeah, we're seeing more and more people looking to 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 build community. That's really been on the rise um, with a lot of different member tools out there. We we can do that. And you know, when when COVID came along, we couldn't do live events. A lot of folks were doing things virtually to bring people together. So it's nice to see everyone's using technology to to achieve all these goals. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Thanks, Joe. So uh, building off those those questions and answers in the chat, as Joe mentioned, we, we saw a lot of you know driving awareness uh, kind of to be expected, but also driving community. So today we'll go through um, sort of some ways and how you can use your website to help get you there. So the first one being driving awareness of you of your cause as well as your organization. Uh, and some of the ways that we do that, you know, we've got like a sort of a case study on the screen here of how um, how this is laid out. One way is through content. So, you know, emphasizing storytelling and using a lot of your visuals and, and, and the media across your website so that you can show how your nonprofit makes an impact. So when someone comes to the website, they see the images you've chosen, they see the copy there, they can really understand how you connect to your audience, how you to connect to your audience, connect to your causes. Um, and the other way, another way to do that would be through the structure. So how you can use uh, different pages, but more specifically different sections like the blog or the news section to keep people updated, to give them something refreshing to come back to, to come back to. So getting out of just the brochure style website that just tells about like who you are and what you've done uh, and really use like the news, the updates, the blog section through a, a website to provide content constant updates um, through content. So that could be, you know, an impact you've had, that could be, um, you know, recent events that you've, that you've hosted and, 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 you know, who attended and who it was supposed to support and such and such as that. Uh, another uh, one of the goals would be to drive donations. So, so how, how do we drive donations through a website? Again, through content and same sort of things here, content and structure. So the content we use um, is going to emphasize the impact that donation is going to have. It's really important, especially as you're asking for someone's time or someone's money, um, or you know, or them to to share these donations with their you know their trusted uh, friends, family, whatever it might be. You really want to emphasize what impact that donation is going to have. So if I give a dollar, where does that dollar go? You know, if I give you my time, where is that time going? And, and a, a great way to do that is through uh, you know evolving content and creating content uh, and and showcasing the impact that you that then they or other donors have or will have. Uh, and then from a structural standpoint, making sure there's like clear calls to action to let them know that this is the impact that your organization has. Here's the impact that other donors have had and how they can actually get involved. So you'll see on the examples on the screen here, um, it's not always just going to be, hey, donate now, give me money, things like that. It's going to, you, you want to have a combination of like soft and we'll call like sort of like a harder call to action. The soft ones would be like, learning more. So learning more about the impact other donors have had. Um, and then you can get more, you know, more specific and have something that says like, you know, make an online donation or, or donate now or contribute now and, and using those things. And then as we talk through this, as we go through these things, it's nice to funnel, it, it's a best practice to, to funnel people down to a single, single donation page. So um, you might have multiple things they can donate to on that donation page, but you don't really want to confuse confuse the audience by having like multiple different donation pages scattered throughout your website, um, you know, create a, a common place where they can come to donate or to, 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 to give time to volunteer or to sign up for an event. We're serving the community. Um, an example we, we put here, we work with a lot of the uh, two on one organizations in United Ways, um, and they're, you know, heavily emphasized, hem heavily emphasis on serving their communities and becoming and being a resource um, for you know their, their local communities or cities, whatever the, the municipalities, whatever they might be. So your content on your web, one way to, to reach this goal is using the content on your website, um, emphasizing the resources that are available for that target audience. So if you know if you serve um, you know caregivers or providers uh, of you know different age range children, different age ranges of children, the, the resources that are available to them, either through the state or the local government or through those providers, those organizations, um, showcasing things like event calendars, volunteer opportunities, um, user-generated content that, that, that can be provided as a resource um, is a great way to use content to, to drive, drive towards that goal. Uh, and then as far as how we structure these things, making sure that it's very clear how someone navigates there and can get to where the, what they want. So 
you think of this in this example, this is, you know, uh, you can kind of see how you would drive someone through. So they select their category, they can start entering keywords, they can look for, you know, what the resource they want, and they can drill down to either through a map or through the, the form on the right. Uh, in this example, uh, by their zip code, by their city, whatever, but you're giving them many different ways, but they know where they're trying to go, right? Uh, same sort of thing with like a calendar. If, you know, if you've got a calendar on a website, yeah, it's great just to have a calendar list or a list of all your events, but you really want to give them a way to like sort, search and filter by the type of event they're looking for, or even the type of donation or something like that, that they might be looking for. So um, adding those features like sort, search and filter. <clears throat> Another really great way that's that's becoming, obviously it's been popular for, for a while, but becoming more and more popular through things like AI and, uh, and the chat tools are adding a chat bot or a discussion forum um, right to your website, which can really help you connect immediately if you have someone that's able to manage man that chat bot and manage that chat bot, or you can use the AI tools to kind of create what we're going to call sort of like smart, smart chatting, where you, you can engage with a, your visitor without you actually being there. So have a series of prompts and questions to guide them down their path, to direct them to, to where they should be going um, to get to better serve your community. Uh, we want to kind of, so we talked about a few of the different, different goals, but looking at some, some ways that we can make a, some of those goals work together across your website. So we do this by prioritizing. So making sure that we understand what those common goals are. You don't just throw everything on the homepage, for example, um, and identify how you're going to highlight those throughout the site. So what are the most important calls to action? Where are you going to show, you know, your, your impact stories? Um, but coming up with that plan in the, in the, in the, in the beginning and prioritizing those goals. So is our main, you know, think about from an organizational standpoint, is your main goal and do you want to showcase yourself as someone who's trying to drive donations or do you want to showcase uh, you as an organization who is in this example, you know, creating leaders. So lead with that, um, you know, whether that's recruiting leaders or, you know, using donations to drive more of those leaders and then have, like I said, those secondary um, calls to action to do things like to make a donation or get involved, whatever that might be. Um, also being able to integrate multiple goals into like a single user experience. So as I mentioned, like having one donation page, but then the opportunities for people to donate to different causes, different pieces of the causes, or even volunteer um, so that you're, you know, you, you've got them there, but now you're able to use that same page, that same system to, to drive more value to them. Uh, but this is a, a place where it's, you know you got to be a little bit careful here going back to prioritization to be sure you're not confusing them on that page. So again, don't just throw everything there. Make sure you've got you know a priority for how you want it to do that. Uh, and then segmenting your audience. So understanding that that a, lot, a bunch of a bunch of different people might be visiting your website for different purposes, and making sure there's a clear user experience for them to follow. So. If it's a first time visitor, you might want to just give them a background on, you know, who your organization is and give them an op opportunity to learn more. So understand that's a, you know, first time visitor, um, or you ha might have a donor or repeat donor or something like that. They might be more interested in, in seeing where, you know, the money that they, they donated last year or last month or whatever is going. So you want to drive them to like a news updates or impact page. To pri help prioritize these goals, uh, it's important to start to map your goals to that the website functionality. So how does your website work? How can your website work? And how are you building this out? We do that through calls to action, uh, through the content and the messaging we started to talk about, um, through navigation and site architecture, uh, and then ultimately through data collection and reporting uh, to, to see how that's working and to make improvements over time. So mapping your goals to your Call to act, well, mapping your goals to your website functionality through calls to action. Calls to action, you'll hear us call them CTAs, um, are typically just a, a, a lot of times you'll see them as a button or like a, an image where you're asking someone to, to take a next step. Um, but these are, this is the, the whole piece. So in like, I can't probably show you on my screen here, but if you see where it says like Lucy Outreach, lifting up Camden's youth, donate now. That whole section is technically the call to action, but we're really, we're speaking more more specifically to um, the, the, usually the headline and the button. So what do you want them to do? These should be tailored towards your spe that specific audience and fit um, the look and the feel and design and things like that, your website, they can be as complex, you know, as like a video with a, a button over it, or they can be as simple as just like a headline with like a, 
a short description and maybe you'll see like a link that says, you know, learn more or, you know, read this blog post or something like that. But all of that is, is built to drive someone to take that next step versus something that's more flat. Like if you just had like a, a listing of your services, there's really no call to action in telling you, you know, what your organization provides. So think about what that action is you want someone to take and make sure it's clear, concise, um, and fits within the design look and feel of your website. Some examples of calls to action would be driving donations. So in this example um, from Vatuity Cares with Hassan Minaj, we're using a celebrity to uh, endorsement to grab attention. Um, you can see the, the the donate the donate button really stands out in that in that 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 area below. Uh, and then we have like the tagline that shows you know United Against Health Equity. So it talks it it draws your attention. It tells you what the organization does and it asks for you to take that next step. Um, there's also awareness type calls to action. You'll often see these where someone asks you to subscribe to a newsletter or you know sign up for blog updates. Um, this just this is like a really top of the funnel way to get someone to give you a little bit of information, but knowing that they don't have to give you anything as an organization yet. So you're not maybe they don't know who you are yet, but they want to see you know learn more about uh, you know how your organization is providing. Um, services with, within the community or how they might be able to get involved, but they're not ready to take that next step. So you want to give them a way to encourage them to give you a little bit of information, like their email address. Maybe they want to opt into text messages, or this could be something like a, a chat, uh, like a chat bot where they get, they give you a little bit of something, you give them something back. So you're asking them to give us your email address. We're going to send you our newsletter. Called CTAs for engaging volunteers. So think about these as like a volunteer now button, um, things like that. And as I talk about talk through all these things, I think it's really important to to highlight that just dropping a button on your website usually won't um, won't drive the action and the engagement you're looking for. In the thousands of websites we've done, in many cases we have people, you know, our our, our um, executive directors, things like that, at different organizations who just want to plop a, a donate now button in the, in the header of their website. And, and they expect that to, to drive the donations. And across the board, more than 90% of these, um, we don't see clicks on those donate, those donate now buttons. It's nice to have it there. It, it kind of reinforces that your organization is looking for a donation, that someone is able to, to make a donation. But the bulk of the donations happen in contextual calls to action. Same thing for volunteers, same thing for join now, stuff like that. People are, especially for first time or, or you know, um, sort of strangers coming to the website, they're not just going to come there and click that big red button in the top right corner. You need to give them some context. Uh, and that's especially important for things like volunteers and, and community service. Um, so having like a, a volunteer button on the homepage header, footer, like we said, to, to show that that's what you're looking for, but then using that call to action to, to ask them for more information, to reach out so that they're not just, you know, again, you're not just popping a button there, hoping they click it. Uh, same thing is true with what's for calls to action for serving the community. Um, give them, these, these often will need some more context behind them. So tell them why they should serve, why they should join your community, whether that's to like have their questions answered by other community members, whether that's to engage with you know, your core audience, uh, and then make sure you're providing resources for them to help them connect with those, those partners, those audiences as well. From calls to action, we can jump into using content and messaging um, to, to map to your goals. So <clears throat> as long as your content, your messaging is tailored to your, your, should be tailored to your specific goal. Um, it's a little bit less important to think about just creating a ton of content. So we're not talking about like, you know, you got to create multiple pages, you got to post mul multiple blogs. It's important to make sure that your the way that your website is organized, especially your homepage is organized, um, is, is tailored to that specific goal. And then you want to allow, evolve that content out over time. So if the goal is for like raising awareness, um, you might think about using more educational content, but focus on telling a story and following that story um, you know, throughout the, the pages of your website versus if you're trying to drive donations, um, you might want to think about shrinking these, shrinking this content down uh, and being very specific and, and having like an ur urgent call to action to say, you know, we need help now. We're raising money for this cause, especially if you think about organizations and like for disaster preparedness, um, like food security, things like that, where it's a very urgent need, not that all needs aren't urgent, but the, the more specifically urgent needs, 
um, having that urgent call to action is, is a way to use content messaging to, to drive that behavior. Great, thanks, Kyle. Yeah, con content creation is is probably one of the trickiest things to do. Um, you have to really know know your different audiences, and you're creating content for each audience, and you're also creating the content at each stage of their conversion path to to achieve those goals. If you want them to become a volunteer, you're going to have to create content that, in the beginning, raises awareness about your organization gets a little more detailed in, in who you are, what you do, who you serve. And then when you make that ask to, to volunteer, it needs to be crisp and concise and, and upfront. So we usually have a rule of thumb of, of these five points. So know your audience. For each nonprofit we work with, we create personas. So we understand that whole audience or user journey, uh, whether they're coming in to volunteer or to donate, or you're serving them within the community. What 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 information do they need at each one of these station uh, stages, and then clearly articulate your mission. That that needs to be first and foremost upfront on the homepage, and especially on the donation page or on the volunteer page. Any of the pages, once you click that call to action and they come to that landing page, what what are you clearly articulating? You you want them to do. And that relates back to the mission. And then use data in evident, and evidence. Um, you know, there's so much clutter out there with so many different nonprofits. If you could use data that you're making an impact and have testimonials and evidence from, from, from real folks, that's going to really help um, elevate you above, above the crowd. So that's super important anytime you're, you're, you're creating content, back it up. And then be authentic and transparent. That that goes right right along with the data and evidence. Have start to form your voice within the community, and then optimize all your content for for search engines. So on the back end of WordPress and other and other platforms, there's different plugins we could discuss uh, at at the end of the questions. But how do you really optimize for search engines? So when folks are searching for you, you're you're popping up. Um, so they're they're kind of the main five tips for for creating content, and then we'll just we'll dig in a little deeper. Um, on the next slide, let's see if we can move this forward. Yeah, so the next slide here, um, content in action. So when when you're creating your mission statement, if, if there's it, it's super important to get that nailed down right on on your homepage and. It, the formula there, it's it's PSS, the problem, the solution, and then what does success look like if if that's if that problem is solved? So on the left here, we have Rally for Vets, helping veterans in need. Um, that clearly identifies what they do, and they help pay for uh, medical and mortgage bills for for veterans, and they do it through through these car rallies. Um, on the other on the other side, we have uh, Marley Smile. They're committed to changing the world for kids with cancer in two ways. Uh, the first is they get a, a custom fairy friend, a stuffed animal for for the cancer patients, and then they're donating uh, their their funding and the donations uh, to pediatric uh, cancer research. So right right then and there, you're seeing the problem, you're seeing the solution, and what and what does success look like. And that success can be through through the verbiage in your content or even even in imagery, um, which is super important when you when you're asking for donations as well. We we see so many nonprofits that have this highly aloof um, mission of saving saving the world, bringing peace, um, but we just need to get a little more more specific on on, on how we're going to do that, and then we can really make 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 an impact. On the flip side. With the next slide, um, there's not. If you're a nonprofit, let's say it's an association. We have a lot of associations, or you're serving a, a community with with information. Um, if if that's the case, then you really need to know your audience. This is for the Inner Society Council or for pathology information. So it's for it's for pathologists and people who work in pathology. It's a member based organization. So the way they look at content and, and achieving their goals is, is completely different. So their goals are like a lot of nonprofits or associations is to increase membership. 
And there's usually a dollar sign associated with membership, so that increase, increases funding. Um, and to make more members come and to, and to pay that, they need to show value. So from a content standpoint, you're, you're providing um, resources and access to events, and you're, it's, it's almost like a library in terms of, of the content, but you're getting them what they need when they need it. And if your members are happy and you're providing member value, then sponsors will be attracted because they want to sponsor these types of sites um, who have a lot of members. So in this case, you're, you're talking about pharmaceutical companies, medical device companies that want to support uh, the needs of, of pathologists who may ultimately buy, buy their equipment. So anyhow, two, two completely polar opposite ways to use content, but they're really both being used to achieve the goals. One's through do donations, the, and the other on this side is more around membership and, and sponsorship. Great, so the next piece that's really important when we look at um, achieving your goals, we've gone through all this, and what we'll generally do with a lot of nonprofits is, is doing a site map. So if we're gonna create the website, this is where we'll build the schematic to kind of show the user journey for each one of these audiences. This will be completely different for the pathology association where people are coming in and they're using the, the website as a resource center. Whereas if it's you know a, a nonprofit around diabetes research or cancer, folks are coming in to learn how they can support uh, people in need. So we'll map out, and it's always a great, great way to map out, even if you're just doing it on a napkin, <laughs> um, but map out that user journey and, and your website. So you know how all these different, these different pieces uh, work together. And as someone takes a step from the homepage to the about page or they're reading a blog, if, if, if the goal ultimately is to drive a donation or a volunteer, if you can increase the conversion rate at each one of these steps because you have the right content, you have the right messaging, the CTAs are in the right spot, um, and you're clearly articulating um, the next step or what they need to do, if you increase those conversion rates along the way, 10, 20%, at the end of the day, you could be doubling um, your, your outcomes. So super important to, to map all this out as well. Thanks, Joe. So some after we map the, these things out, as Joe was mentioning, for the navigation and the site architecture, so tips for ex effective navigation would be one, keep it simple. So you know, not overcomplicating it, not having way too many drop downs, not not overwhelming your audience when they get there. Give them a, a concise path that they should take with that that different levels of hierarchy, and we'll show you some examples. In the following slides and some of those um, those in action. Um, organize the content strategically, so making sure you have like categories and subcategories that make sense for your audience. So don't go overboard on the on the the categories. Or I think a, a really great example um, that we're probably all familiar with on this on this webinar would be TechSoup's website and how their their blog is categorized. So if you go to the blog, you can see the different topics. Sure, there's subtopics and things like that that might exist. But they they they've done a great job of keeping it um, keeping it clean, keeping it easy to navigate between like common themes, common common topics and categories. Um, use descriptive labels. So this means like having navigation items that really tell you what the content's going to lead to. So if you just keep it very vague, it just says about, um, and someone clicks there and it's like very specific. They might they might feel like they've kind of gone the wrong way. Uh, so just making sure that they they understand like what they're where they're going to go when they click that button, click that link. Um, back to calls to action, including calls to action in your navigation. So thinking like we talked about, like using that donate for that volunteer that can take them right to the donate form. As I was mentioning, like this is not going to be the, the common path that someone's going to take. If you look in your Google Analytics, like you probably see the same for yourself. Um, someone doesn't come to your homepage, just click on donate now. Likely what they will do though, what they, they, they may do is go through a few other pages and then end up on that donate page, whether that's from a link in one of those articles or because you know you kind of reinforce them um, that action that they can take um, and then always optimize this for mobile so make sure that you you know if it make sure that the navigation can work across mobile devices um, and isn't you know too long there's not too many la layers too many drop downs and things like that so if you do have a, a very heavy navigation on desktop think about how you can reduce that um, from a mobile device to drive someone to where they're trying to go faster without having them to because on desktop, you can hover. On mobile, you can't. On mobile, you have to click every single time. So if you've got like 
two, three levels of, of drop down menus. That's two to three more clicks that that person has to take and different scrolls that the person has to make on a mobile device. So um, use those responsive design techniques so that your navigation is easy to access across phones, tablets, and things like that. So an example of a, a effective navigation. So this one is, is I would call this, we, we call this a, um, a mega menu style. So this is what you're looking at here is someone on this website has hovered over the R work section. And this is a way to really cleanly break out um, sub navigation in there, but still giving context to what's happening. So on the left, you'll see the, the, the sub menu items under our work, which would be, you know, agriculture and food, clean, renewable energy, coal, as well as like another kind of top level navigation item, which would be legislature. And then like the bill tracker and directory, and then they give some space for them to add more um, in the future to the right. Uh, the way that this actually works and someone hovers over something on the left, it actually changes what shows up on the right. So you might see, um, you might see a different description of that. So this gives you like a way to give like an excerpt of what they, of what they can expect. So driving back to what we talked about, you know, making sure we're using descriptive language um, and labels. This is, this reinforces that even further by showing that if you click on like agriculture and food, this gives a description of what to expect when they go to the agriculture and food section. And you'll see this also includes that, that donate now call to action button right up in the header. Um, as far as organizing content, so you can kind of see how this, this sort of, this all drives to the same place. Um, as you see these little crazy little arrows going, going throughout this, um, when you click on different places throughout the website, if you were to go to northernplains.org, you can kind of see this in action, but uh, the different subsections there in that top left corner of this this slide will drive you to the map and the map can kind of drive you back there the map has a goes both ways too um or that 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 user experience goes both ways too so you can see the left of that we've also got like a listing of these things so two ways to to see visually how to get to um those different communities and then once you're there uh it drives you to to more information about that community so if i follow this through from the top from the top, I could go from Bear Creek Council, see where that is on the map, but I can also take that right through to like that that um, the content about Bear Creek Council further down the the user flow, basically. Uh, as, as we talked about, keeping the website mobile optimized, so the navigation being mobile optimized, but also the website being mobile optimized, is going to help you know dr drive more for your your audience and keep that consistent user experience across all different devices. Um, so as you see how this changes from the desktop, so that the image on the left down to the mobile mobile device with the image on the right. Um, and as I was mentioning about, you know, multiple layers and clicks. So on the desktop, you've got who we are, our services, events, that type of thing. Um, on the mobile device, you're gonna have that little, it's called a hamburger menu. There's three little lines in the top right corner by the search icon. When someone clicks that, they would be presented with that same, that same menu. Uh, and if you notice the difference on the desktop and, and mobile, how the actual screen itself works. So we've moved um, the contact us and the donate. We kept the contact us and the donate now call to actions there on the mobile device. You'll see how that changes and resizes uh, to fit, fit on that new screen. From a website functionality standpoint, as we talked about, once we've, we've gone through, we've, we've added all these features, um, you know, you want to start with the data collection and reporting. So if you've got Google Analytics set up and things like that now, you want to look at how things are performing and you're going to make these changes based on what you see, but also based on assumptions that you hope to see um, once those changes are made. And then having a um, having these data reporting tools in place are going to allow you to iterate over that and opt, continually optimize across your site. So um, Google Analytics, you know, if you don't, if you don't have it on your website, it's a free tool. It's pretty, it's, it's very easy to get set up. There's a number of, of uh, course materials and content webinars that are available straight through TechSoup um, that'll help you sh help show you how to do this, how to get it added to your website. So you can at least start there and see what users are doing currently plan these changes, implement these changes, uh, and see how those, how those changes are performing to update these, to identify like where there's rooms for, where there's room for improvement, where something you've, you've um, changed has, has really made an impact across your organization. But what's great is uh, if you tie this into to, to more specific tools, something like HubSpot, um, you can also, you can then further track when someone comes to your website, what are they doing? And I don't mean just like the pages they click on, but like are they converting? Are they 
converting, like filling out a form, uh, you know, where do they come from to get to that page, to fill out that form? What are the most popular pages or the highest converting pages on your website? Um, you know, what, what's the, what are the, what's the content areas of interest and things like that? And then you can even draw that out to how does that convert to donations or volunteers, um, or engagement? So some examples of how we collect data um, for these nonprofit goals. We collect data on driving donations or attracting volunteers. Um, so things we want to look at would be like number of donations received, um, total amount of donations, where these donations are coming from. So they're coming from like in individuals, corporate sponsors, um, average donation amount, and then conversion rate for donation forms. So the conversion rate is just the number of visits versus the number of people that converted. So like the, you find the percentage of those. So like, if 100 people come to the website and two people convert, the donation, the conversion rate is 2%, right? And then you can, you can, having these things, you can calculate or report on other things like average, like we said, average donation amount, um, the total, um, total amounts per donation, you can get like a, like cost per acquisition and things like that from, from those numbers. Once you have, once you start to collect this and collect that information into a, uh, uh, like a data tool. Uh, same thing, you can look at the similar things for attracting volunteers or, you know, converting new community members. So number of volunteer signups, the type of volunteers, the activities that, they're, that, were, that they were interested in and actually converted them. Um, and then you can get more granular and, and look at things like number of volunteer hours logged. If you have a system where the volunteers can come in and either sign in or they can, they can log their time. Um, and then look at that over time. So the same thing from like a calculation standpoint, not so much a data collection standpoint, but once you've collected it, you can start to see like the retention rate of volunteers. So how many did we get last year? How many of those carried over into this year? How many of those, you know, are, are volunteers for, you know, year over year? Some of those platforms we, we already touched on, but Google Analytics um, said free. It measures website user traffic, um, common user behavior. You can get very granular and set goals and things in here, but just at a high level, it's a great tool to put in place to see where your users are coming from, what they're doing on your website, what the popular pages are, how much time they're spending there, and look for opportunities to improve things like bounce rate, time on page, and things like that. Um, with HubSpot, it's a marketing automation platform, also like a sales enablement tool, so like a donation enablement tool as well. Um, you can track website traffic, your leads, um, and really and manage in a, a CRM in a, in a contact relationship management system, um, volunteer and donor data, uh, as well as other you know website visitor data across the board. Uh, Razor's Edge is great for tracking donations, very donation heavy and specific. Uh, manage donor data, generate those reports. Survey Monkey, uh, great for collecting feedback, uh, data about donors, and just getting sort of. I would say right now it would be um, when when you think about a survey tool, I wouldn't use that so often to track it to a specific donor, but just to take like to get take the temperature sort of of, of um, your activity and your engagement across the donors, the volunteers, whatever. Uh, and then Tableau gets a little bit more detailed. That's a, a, a business intelligence tool that allow you to visualize a lot of this data and actually pull in information from these different platforms and, and let you kind of slice and dice and, and show things over top of each other. So I see, you know, what does my website look like as far as, you know, over donor traffic or donor uh, information? Great. Thanks, Kyle. Um, so yeah, to, to, to summarize all, all this around goals, it really comes down to, you know, a three-step process. It's identify, improve, and implement. So Identify your top goals for, for the website, whether it's donations, volunteers, and awareness. And when setting those goals, always important to start with the baseline, where you want to improve to and timing. So if the website's generating $100,000 a year, we want to increase uh, donations by 20% 20, 20 to 120000 And we want to do this within six months. So set those specific goals with a time frame around each of these different goals and that'll really start start you in the right spot and then improve where where can you improve so if you're trying to increase donations what can you improve is it being more clear in terms of the messaging on the home page and in, in your hero section is it educating your audience a little bit more and building that trust through testimonials and 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 blogs 
And then is are the call to actions timely and in the right space? And if the call to action is to donate, does that donation page, is there an image of a, a person that could be served by your donation? Is, is, is that pulling at the heartstrings? Can, can you relate to that person? Is the messaging clear about the benefits of what will happen if, if, if you donate and how that person's life will, 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 will improve? All these pieces, if, if you look at each one and it can improve all these, you know, you, you, can, you can start to hit, the, to hit those goals and then implementing them. Um, you want to implement them. You know, it might seem like a big task, but if you could knock off one piece at a time, which is great, you can actually measure each each change. You know, through Google Analytics or HubSpot to see how how those changes are working. Um, but that's really where the analytics come into play. So as you make these incremental changes, measuring to see the percent increase um, in traffic or or conversion rates. That'll really help uh, help as well. So anyway, that's I mean it, it 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 seems like a lot, but if you tackle one of these one at a time, I, I think you'll be in great shape. Um, the next part we just want to roll into is you know some of TechSoup's service offerings that to, to help get you there. Uh, tech Tap Network uh, through TechSoup, we 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 offer two services through uh, through TechSoup. One is website development. And the other is, is digital marketing. So if you click on the services tab in TechSoup and you'll see the drop down menu, website services, digital marketing, that's us. We've been a partner with TechSoup for over five years and have built close to a thousand uh, different websites. So we're excited to help you out. We'll just go over a few of the services that we offer. Um, one is a custom website development starting at $10,000. So if you're a new nonprofit, and you're looking to get out of the gates uh, strong, that's something we can help you with. A lot of the nonprofits we work with have a website. It was built on Wix or Squarespace or, or even WordPress, and you're looking to take it to the next level. So we'll use all the different tools in SEO and marketing automation to get you there. Um, as far as our process, whether you're doing it yourself or working with another uh, developer such as TAP, you know, really look at, at the strategy that'll be phase one. We'll, we'll do discovery, a content audit, a technology audit, see how everything's pieced together to really map out, map out that plan. And then it comes down to content development and, and design. And then ultimately, once all those design pieces are there, the content's there, we know where everything's flowing, then that's the development phase. Generally, we'll use WordPress if you're into you know, evolving into marketing automation, we'll integrate HubSpot into WordPress as well. And then it's really a, a growth-driven approach of, you know, quality assurance and testing and retesting and measuring. So we're constantly improving your, your website and, and hitting those goals. So that's kind of the four-part process. With other nonprofits, if you're, you know, in great shape and, and you're just looking to improve on, on, a, on a monthly basis, we have retainer services starting at $4.99 a month, and we're basically serve as your, your outsourced CTO or chief marketing officer. We have a whole team that would be dedicated to your nonprofit with a select amount of hours to take all the requests that you need and work with you too to, to set these goals and, and achieve them. Great. So um, I know we went over a lot today. Uh, it was more around, you know, strategy and 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 in terms of build of you know setting your goals and how you can use your website to achieve them. Um, we could dig a little deeper if you have technology questions as well. But we'll open up the floor to any questions uh, that you guys might have. I'm gonna read a few off here, Joe. So the, I'll just kind of go in order that's in the Q and A and go to the chat as well. So. Um, someone asked, how do you recommend integrating social media news feeds into a website so the story summary is clear, draws attention on the website, but the amount of space taken up is minimized? Um, it's a great question. I mean, there's, it, it's really dependent on, on what those stories look like. So having a social having your own social media feed on your website is, is a great way to show content that's that's refreshed without you having to repost it and put it right on your website. 
it's important not to not to duplicate that though so like let's say if you have a website where your blog blog auto posts to social media then you have your blog post on your homepage and you have a social media field on your homepage you're going to have duplicate content on there it's just going to look distracting for the visitor if they see the same thing twice so you know making sure that th those things are related uh, on brand but not the same not just repeated um so you know you can use one of the uh, either if you use something like WordPress or, or Squarespace or something like that that is a social media feed so you can use one of those tools to feed that stuff in sometimes that's the difference between like having an Instagram feed feed into your homepage but having like the blog on the on the homepage as well so you don't have like that duplicate content um from as far as a news feed same sort of thing there if you're going to pull an RSS feed in you can pull in like you can use one of the, the plugins like an RSS reader and just resize it so it's in a place that's uh, not distracting to your website users a lot of times what we'll see is these will be put in um, either the footer or in a sidebar or something like that so they're, they're there but out of the way they're not distracting from the, the main content um, across the website um someone asked if we we're looking to have a website for securing grants and be and provide membership how would that look um that's probably something that you, you can reach out to us we can talk about that more specifically um give you some more direction on that um is somebody asked isn't Google Analytics ending if so what options will there be to collect this data so Google Analytics isn't ending they are changing their support to what their new um, piece which is called or their new tool called Google Analytics 4 or GA4 um, effective I believe it's July of this year uh, they will stop you if you have an existing Google Analytics um, like property it will stop receiving data and you'll have to move that to Google Analytics 4. There are, and if you have any kind of customizations, they're not going to follow, they're not going to follow over like automatically. So you'll have to make that upgrade in advance so that you can start collecting um, the information now. So you don't have this big gap, um, you know, from month over month data or year over year data. Those will, those properties will still exist, but they won't get any new data. So like say August 1st, um, if somebody comes to your website and you haven't upgraded to Google Analytics 4 yet, you won't see any of that traffic showing up on there. Um, someone asked if we only work with nonprofits, we're a consulting firm that works with nonprofits, we're not a nonprofit. We work with, you know, enterprise level businesses, small, medium sized businesses. Um, we focus very specifically a lot, a lot of our marketing towards nonprofits and through our partnership with TechSoup, that is nonprofit exclusive, but we aren't, we aren't nonprofit exclusive um, as far as an agency goes. Um, somebody asked any idea on creating a website just for members and no marketing or sales associated, such as a community or church. We've done a number of these, um, still following these same, these same best practices. A lot of times you are gonna have like a marketing sort of front end of that in some way to drive them into there, to get them to come there, to join, to be part of your community. So following these practices is gonna be very helpful. Uh, but once you've built that on the back end, then it becomes more about that 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 repeat user experience. So same sort of thing, keeping clear, concise navigation, calls to action, content, messaging, structure, things like that for them, and then just selecting the tools that are going to best fit um, fit you or your your cause, your organization. Uh, so our questions or actions better for call to action messaging, for instance, interested in volunteering versus volunteering with us, like interested in volunteering question mark versus volunteering with us. Um, it's, a, I mean, I, I let Joe take this one too, but I think it's, it's good to have a mix of those two things, but you want to be sure that, um, whatever that message is, that it's clear that that's eliciting an action, right? So there's things like, um, I see this pretty frequently where it's like, have you heard our nonprofit is now doing this, right? Learn more, right? So using that, have you heard question mark um, to, to, to guide them into there for that, the example you share where it says interested in volunteering question mark, um, that, that's great as long as you follow that with like the action that you want them to take, like interested in, interested in volunteering question mark, you could say something like, hear from other volunteers for the impact that they've made, click here to volunteer now, or hear from other volunteers. So you're still going to want to have like an, an action after that question. So you might just be in some cases overcomplicating it. Um, if you were having, adding too much content there. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, Joe. Yeah, generally what we'll, we'll, we'll do similar to emails, we, we can a B test call the actions. And, you know, if, if you're using something like HubSpot, you, you can do that in, in real time and it will serve up, you know, it, it'll rotate that call to action in there, or you can leave one up for 
a few days and then and then swap it out for a different one and 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 mention what's got what's got the highest conversion rate. That's that's one quick way to do it and really and really test it out. Great. Um, what do you think of job form as volunteer acceptance form on a website? Job, job form is a great uh, op option too, as long as you know you track the database. Sometimes having that connect it should it should be connected somewhere you can use like a CRM too because you don't want to just look at forms sort of one dimensionally to see like how did this form do. Um, you want to be able to see how did this person like this this donor what did they do across my website. So if you're looking at that just on a per form basis. Uh, you want to be able to see at a, at a more global basis, like let's say Joe visits your website, and fills this form out, that form out, and some vo a volunteer form. Uh, you want to be able to engage with Joe about across all of his actions or contextually from his actions. So making sure it's tied into um, a common database uh, like CRM would be would be helpful if you're going to use that. But it's a very viable tool for uh, information gathering. Um, somebody earlier on asked. How many website pages are ideal? This is very specific to your organization, your need, uh, and your capacity. Uh, you know, I think there, there needs to be enough that it's clear what your organization does, the impact you have, and it's the kind of thing that will likely grow over time. But you know, if you're one person working in that organization, limited budget, I don't 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 go overboard just trying to create a bunch of pages and a bunch of functionality. Find out, you know, use what's mission critical and iterate over that and improve that over time. Um, and then if you have, you know, a lot of resources or you're going to be building a lot of resources, you know, making sure that that, that stuff is, is kept up to date, clean and concise, too, uh, if you have the bandwidth for it. Sorry, just trying to go through some of these questions here, make sure we cover as much as we can with the time we've got left. Um, can you create back end dashboards for different volunteer positions? use that can be visible to administration. You certainly can, it depends on the platform you're using. I know on WordPress, you can do that. You could you know, create like a, a user backend um, on some of the different websites and portals. You can do that as well as using different BI tools. You can provide access to um, to different reports based on user levels, user roles. Uh, you could also build, you know, if there's have a custom, custom software build or something like that uh, on there as well. Um, Following up for the social media newsfeed question, um, do you recommend integrating Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or something else? Which one is the most effective? That's contextual to your organization as well. Um, it depends what you like. A lot of times we'll see organizations that just want to create every social media channel that's out there, and then a lot of them will stay stagnant. They won't be active on that. I would pick the channels that you can that you can keep up to date that are that are that are appealing for and reach your target audience so you have to know who your target audience is and who you want to follow you um you know if it's great if you have your friends and family follow your organization but if that's not your your user that's not your audience it doesn't really have the impact you want to make sure that if if your audience is on Facebook uh, but not on Instagram you you should be active on Facebook and not really worry about Instagram if your audience is on TikTok you know be be active on TikTok and not on you know the the the, the channels that they're not active on, um, and then having that feed across your um, on your website just sort of reinforces that oh they can go there to stay up to date with you they don't have to keep coming back to your website so showing that they they can follow they can like that kind of thing but again back to that earlier point um, you know if you have a YouTube channel and you've never posted anything on there you can, you should probably take the YouTube button off your website because um, you don't want them to go there and see that there's nothing and ex expect there to be something or they think it's like a dead link. So um, only what you can handle and only what is, is, um, is relevant to your, to your audience, to your cause. Uh, cut time for a few more questions. What is a realistic amount of time dedicated to website development updating is practical and recommended for most nonprofits? I hate to keep saying this is all contextual or specific to your nonprofit, but that really is. Like if your nonprofit is, is very active at larger nonprofit, um, full-time website person is not out of the question or a full-time website team is not out of the question. Um, and then even then, you know, bringing an outside agency who can take on some of that work or kind of take a strategic view um, is important. But if you're a small nonprofit or one person in an organization or working, um, you know, as part of a, a larger department, um, it's allocating the time that's, that's relevant to what you expect to get out of it. Right. So if you, um, if a lot of your, like Joe mentioned earlier on, 
we saw a lot of nonprofits that had to pivot during COVID that were serving people in person, serving people in their communities, a lot of boys and girls clubs, YMCAs and things like that to do this, to do these programs that now they're left with, with no way to reach their community. And they had to quickly pivot um, to online only to be able to reach out to the community. In that case, uh, the time spent changed drastically versus what they should spend on their website to building out their website to building these programs out on their website. And I think we'll continue to see that as we grow and as, as organizations become um, a little bit less locate, a little bit more location agnostic, so they don't have to be specifically in person to serve to serve someone. Um, but it's the effort that you need to put in to get, you know, whatever it is out of that. So if you've traditionally um, done a lot of donation events and, and drives and things like that, and, and your your effort is is focused is typically focused on that, and that's not paying off, but there's an opportunity. To shift that online, you're going to want to shift that same effort, all, you know, to to online, to marketing, to to the web development. Um, what's nice about web about the website development, taking the growth driven approach that we we recommend. Um, if you you know plan well, you start to execute that, and you start to test, and you start to optimize. Um, it'll take a, it's a little bit more upfront, but a lot less on the back end, and it'll you'll get to market faster than if you have this grand plan. And you have to build this this large this large system or or website before you're ready to launch. And then you've lost all that time um, that you could have been testing, that you could have been optimizing, you could have been growing your website. Um, I'm trying to talk as fast as I can. So I hope you guys can still understand me. <laughs> Just trying to get this in for the end of the hour. Uh, would you prefer WordPress or HubSpot over Drupal? I hate the word Drupal. I hate the system Drupal. I don't, we, we don't love working on that um, for a number of reasons, especially because they have large upgrades that, that leave everything else in the dust. Um, and they're very complex, they, but it is a great tool for uh, more complex websites and sometimes like, you know, user platforms. So in most cases, we'd recommend WordPress. More than a quarter of the of all websites across the web are on WordPress. It is enterprise level um, if you need it. So, you know, I would take a look at that. There's a, a much larger group of developers and people out there that are familiar with things like WordPress and then HubSpot, um, especially from a marketing standpoint, um, but it's also budget specific. From a website standpoint, I still typically lead towards WordPress for for websites, but HubSpot for marketing, for automation, for you know lead landing pages, for forms, especially for CRMs, and definitely for nonprofit organizations as they offer a forty percent discount for you all uh, through TechSoup. We're HubSpot partner, Platinum partner. So if you have any questions about that, reach out directly to us. We can get those answered for you. Uh, what's the best way to get in touch with you to have my questions answered? Uh, through TechSoup, if you go to their, their website and go to services, find marketing or digital marketing or website, whatever that might be, um, go through that. There's a, there'll, it'll put a form on that webpage. You can reach out to us. We will send this, this deck out to you all as well. It's got our contact information in it. You can probably just reply right to that um, to, to get in touch with us. And we're happy to set up a time to, to, to go through any of these questions in more detail. Um, I got time for probably one more. Uh, do you recommend having all your blog pages stay on your website? I was thinking about using a link to Medium for my website to the blog post in Medium. That is um, yes and no. I recommend a lot of times we'll use Medium as a way, as an outlet to drive traffic back to your your blog, your existing website. But I would often keep the blog on your own on your own website or on a blog platform attached to your website. So you might have a separate website and blog, um, but the blog would feed through your website and the website would be prominent on the blog. So I'll do that. I will do one more. Um, do dashboards in Word on WordPress deprecate? Can they be used over time or do they fail? Depends what you use for the dashboard and the, the system that you use for that, how you embed it. Um, so it can, but you know, a lot of times we've, we've had, we've got websites that have been on that have been updated, but um, using the same data and updating the dashboards over time for 10 plus years. So, um, and that will be all the time we have today. I don't think, I think there's probably a few more questions out there, but I actually have to jump for another call. I thank everyone for your time today. We will follow up. You will get this, these slides and this recording um, once it all compiles and then You'll have our information to reach out to us directly for any any additional questions we couldn't cover today. So thank you all very much for the, the great questions.